Welcome to SPS Extra, where we talk about all the latest in Spokane Public Schools athletics and activities. I'm Taylor Brooks. And I'm Stephanie Splater. Graduation. It has come and gone, which is so crazy to think about. So awesome at the podium. Uh, yeah, the podium has been such a big part of this downtown landscape in Spokane. We actually record our podcasts at the downtown library and this whole area has just developed so much but the podium that has just been something that it can be used for everything yeah, and it's the perfect venue the big sky track and field championships are going to be held there i think maybe next year yeah they the just big announced sky, yeah, that i saw that That's awesome. so some college we've obviously had I saw the u.s championship u.s track yeah. yeah and so graduation was all at the podium don't have to worry about the weather there's a roof no podium. there's a roof you get them in you get them out and you get Everyone your diploma. Can see everybody, there's cool <laughs> audio visual there, so that like that looked like a great weekend of graduation. Yes, and KSPS recorded and did all of the graduation. So if you missed a graduation or want to see it, you can check that out on our website. You can also go to spokaneschoolsorg stories as well. But we thought that this would just be a great opportunity to not only talk to a couple of seniors in our district, but just highlight those who made it because it is a lot. It's a lot to go get through high school. It's a lot to get that diploma in your hand. And it is a big deal. Like it's a rite of passage. Yes. And it's like a whole new adventure. You are a mini adult going off into the world. Yep. That's awesome. I know. I love that mini adult thing because sometimes we'll be like, oh, well, how old are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm an adult. I'm a real adult now. Yeah. I've got to you know, I think you do start all the being things. an adult like fifth grade. Like I think you start being like a young adult. Like I think we mentioned that in another <laughs> podcast because you can't, you got, you know how to do school. You know what you're doing in the world. You can have awesome conversations. Now I love some K4, pre-K4 even. Of course. But like I think in fifth grade, you start turning the page. Sixth grade is super important. And now our sixth graders are in middle school. As they should you be. You get into high school and you're really developing like life skills to right. be out there in the world. You're not fully developed. Like I get it. Yeah. You still have a lot to learn. Right. And I think I, I, I'm i still learning. Um, and I'm Always. 40 whatever. But <laughs> like when you graduate high school, you are an adult. You and are. You just what you lack is life experience in years. But you have a lot of responsibility and you need to do your own laundry. Yes, probably. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're doing your own laundry. And if you Set haven't schedule, if you haven't figured that out yet, maybe get a lesson on how to do your laundry. But we'll talk to a Roger senior. Her name is Brooklyn, and she was so candid in her conversation. She has decided to take a gap year and not go straight into college because she wants to make money. And I actually thought that was very noble of her. She's ready to go and get a job. She's ready to do the grind and work. And she's going to do something with kids. And so we were talking about different things and ideas she might have of of doing that. But the fact that she's taking her time, I told her I applauded her for that. Because I'm drowning in student loans as we speak. And so she's going to make money. And she's going to do something that she can put on her resume. And it will only probably help her in whatever direction she ends up taking that seems amazing to take a year because I never even thought of that. I was I like know, straight right? to college. Same. But I saw my nephew take a year off. He graduated in 2020 from yeah. Lewis and Clark. And he took a year off. And you know what he did? He was a barista. And that is Aww. awesome because now he can go work wherever he wants in the whole world with that skill. Absolutely. And, and he probably fantastic. made bank with those tips. Yeah. And good for him. He yeah. went back and got, he just recently became a certified massage professional. He went to massage that is school. so cool. But I was worried he wouldn't go back to school because right. I thought, oh no, if you take a year off. But guess what? Everyone's path is not the same. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be. No. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. And we'll talk to a college and career counselor from Ferris as well in this episode. And we really dug into that in our conversation because the world has just really changed. You always, when you think of a gap year, I feel like in the past, you'd be like, oh, well, people who are going to get their master's, they'll take a gap year or whatever. But I think it's healthy in this day and age because, and you'll hear about this a little bit later, we just get it ingrained in our brains that like we have to go and figure it out and do all these things. Well, that's where you waste a lot of money. Right. You waste a lot of time. And if you haven't figured out, 
great. I'm very happy for you. And that is incredible. But if you don't have it figured out, you're going to hear it a lot in this episode. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with not knowing. And it sounds like we're going to hear from three super different perspectives. Absolutely. But three people who are either encouraging our seniors to go out in the world, um, like Don from Ferris or the two others that you talked with who are seniors they definitely graduated. I think you did talk to them before they graduated, but they sure here we did. are recording afterwards, but that's yeah. all good. And then excited for what their next steps are. And so yeah. can't wait to hear them. Yeah. I think that the thing about the time we're in, in this time period is that it's summer, like summer's supposed to be fun. And some kids have jobs or internships and some kids are just enjoying their time because we're about to hear from a Lewis and Clark senior who is now graduated, but she's moving clear across the country to New Jersey. Wow. And that is a haul. I just got back from the East Coast myself and had an eight hour layover in Dallas to prove it. It's not easy traveling back and forth between right. That's a ways. Spokane to there. And yeah, she it, just wants to spend the summer sure. hanging with her friends and and just taking it all in because she knows that once once that August date hits, she out, she bye bye. And I'm sure she talked about um, her awesome drama advisor, Greg Pashir. Oh, yes. So full circle, that's who I sat next to at graduation because we <sighs> went to school together. Oh, my gosh, my we heart. we had P last names at the time. Oh. And so <laughs> thinking back to senior year and graduation and all the cool things, Mr. Pashir and I, we went K-12. And yes. with our last names, we were um, aligned and sitting Aww. next to each other for quite a bit. Yep. Oh, Hamblin Huskies, Sack Thunderbirds, and Ferris Saxons. Oh my goodness. I did not know about that rich history between the two of you. Yes. We really wanted to highlight Tiger Drama because so awesome. they are such an integral part to this community, to Spoken you, Public Schools. You would think if you saw the LC Drama marketing that this is a full-on Broadway production. It basically is at Every this point. time they put on a play. <laughs> Love it. It oh, is. I know. It's so fantastic. They have such a rich tradition there. Yeah. And Greg's been there quite a while, Mr. Pashir. And I think it is so great that we were able to talk to Catherine about her experiences. Yeah, she was so great. So after this break, we're going to chat with Catherine and about what these last four years have meant to her in Tiger Drama. Welcome back to SPS Extra. We're at Lewis and Clark High School with senior Catherine Dechek, who's been a part of Tiger Drama for the last four years. Let's just start with that. What has these last four years meant to you? Honestly, being a part of Tiger Drama at Lewis and Clark has meant the world to me because I don't think unless you're directly immersed in the program, you know how special it is here at the school. I know so many people who will like see a play their senior year and they're and they're like in the audience. And they're like, "Wait. This is like amazing." And I'm like, I know, we have this amazing arts program, and I was super excited to come here. I remember I saw my first show here when I was in sixth grade, and I saw that they did a production of The Music Man, and I was sitting in the audience, and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to go to this school because since I was five years old, I've wanted to pursue musical theater. So it's given me the tools to learn how to be a better performer and a better communicator, but also just a more well-rounded person in general. Take me back to sixth grade you, when you said you saw your first performance and you it just clicked for you. What was it about Music Man and watching that that made you be like, you know what? That is something I could be doing in, you know, three or so years. I mean, I had seen a bunch of productions before and I had been doing shows since I was five. But when I saw Music Man, I just thought that the caliber of the show at a high school level was mind boggling because especially in Spokane, we're involved in theater and theater is popular here, but it's not like you're gonna be like, go to Spokane, Washington, you're gonna see the most amazing show there at a high school. The professionalism of the actors on stage, the caliber of the choreography and the music and just the amount of work that I could tell as an audience member went into that production was so fascinating to me. And I I knew some people in the program because they, I went to Cataldo Catholic School and I had people that would come from LC to work with us there. So I already felt a little bit more part of the community 
but I knew some place like this was going to push me in the best way. Take me to freshman year and how it all kind of came to life for you. At Tiger Drama, and we've actually grown since I've been here, we have numerous classes that you can take in addition to being involved in our shows. So we have a zero hour stagecraft class, which also counts for students' um, career and technology credit. So there is that, which I was involved in my sophomore year during COVID. And then we have two beginning theater classes, which are just your base level theater classes, two intermediate theater classes, which are for some kids who have had a little bit of theater experience and want more of a, a next level kind of class. And then we have advanced theater, which is our advanced um, theater class, but it's solely acting based. And then we have our musical theater class, which is our advanced musical theater class. So I took intermediate theater my freshman year wow. because you are supposed to, before you can audition for an advanced class, you need to have one year in a, in a base level class, which is a beginning or an intermediate. And I remember I walked into that class. The first thing that you do in Tiger Drama is you talk about why you're here. And some kids say, I'm here because I want to work on my confidence. Some kids say, I'm here because I need my arts credit. Yes. And so, but I, I remember I sat there and I said, as a 14 year old, I said, I'm here because this is what I want to do with my life. And I, I definitely probably got some looks, but I knew immediately if I hit the ground running here, I have four years here, what can I do to push myself? Because I knew the second I got out of here, it gets just harder and harder and harder. So why not make mistakes in this nurturing environment? Why not set the bar high? Because I can only go up from here. How did this set you up for your next steps? Tell us what your next steps are and how you were able to just encompass this entire high school experience to now get you to that next level and to get you to where you're going to go next year. Well, I definitely feel that just Tiger Drama and the community as a whole, Mr. Pashir, Mrs. McGuire, even just we have additional faculty that will come in to help us. We have additional choreographers, Angela Rose Pearson, who's a, a local choreographer. She has come in and taught us new work that has pushed me as a dancer. Uh, we have Carolyn Jess who will come in and she's worked with many theaters around Spokane. The people that they bring in, but also the curriculum that they have set up is designed to push you and designed to make you ready, not just for theater if you want that kind of career, but for anything. I feel like the main thing that Tiger Drama pushes is you don't have to come into this class with, I'm gonna be an actor, or I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be this. Tiger Drama will teach you skills to be the CEO of a business, they'll teach you skills to be a dentist, they'll teach you so many skills that you're not gonna get in other places at LC because it teaches you how to work with others. It teaches you how to be a more aware person in social settings. It teaches you how to work on your self-confidence, how to make mistakes in front of others, how to present yourself professionally. As far as from an artistic standpoint, Tiger Drama has helped me now into college coming up with just my overall awareness in acting. I feel that Mrs. McGuire, she is a fantastic acting coach and we did a play, Our Town, by Thornton Wilder my junior year, and that was such an invaluable experience for me because she really worked with me one-on-one -on -one and dove into what it means to be an actor, what it means to connect things from the show to you as a person. And I just feel that the training and everything that you work on, you not only learn as a student, but you just learn as an overall human being. And that's what Tiger Drama teaches you to do. It teaches you how to be a well-rounded human being, not just a student. So you're telling me that you're very ready for college. <laughs> yes, I think so. I, I definitely know that there's gonna be a bunch of stuff. There's gonna be many, many curveballs, but I feel that I've been given the tools to go in and be like, I'm ready, I can do this, I might fail, but I'm not afraid of it. And I can say pretty much every senior in my graduating class, 
I would say feels, if not the same, but majority the same, because even if we all came in as scared little freshmen, I feel that everybody in our senior class of Tiger Drama is very well-rounded and kind and smart and is ready for the next step. I know before this interview you told me where you're going, but let's tell the listeners where you're going next year, all the way across the country to New Jersey. Yes, I am going to Ryder University in New Jersey and I chose that school because it had such a positive environment for me. I had friends who were there, but it is also happens to be a top 20 musical theater program in the country. It is right by New York and a lot of people don't know how crazy the musical theater audition process is for college. Pretty much if you're auditioning for musical theater in college, a lot of kids are applying to 15 to 20 schools. And I traveled to North Carolina, to Chicago, to a bunch of places. I did virtual auditions. I auditioned for 17 schools. So it is brutal and crazy because you're going up against pretty much the top 2,000 high schoolers in the country in your grade level who want to do this and schools will take about 15 kids per class. When you've been talking, I feel like your dreams have just continued to evolve from when you were five to being a sixth grader to now you've been four years in this program. The next step is college. What is the overall dream for you? If you could cook it up right now and serve it on a platter, what would you be doing in five to 10 years in this world? My main thing is that I always have not wanted to plan my life step by step. I think my main goal is just to be happy and to feel proud of myself because I think when people think of success, they might measure it in money or they might measure it in circles or social status, but I feel especially that Tiger Drama has taught me to measure it in the value that you feel as a human being and your overall happiness and the happiness that you surround yourself with. I have so many things I want to do. I would love to be in a national tour. I would love to be on Broadway. That's like the dream. But I would also love to be in a TV show. I would love to do a movie. One of my new dreams with my dad is to be on SNL. That's another thing. I love it. But I I just want to work and I just want to figure out new ways that I can explore my craft and experience and find new ways to discover new ways to live and, and new ways to, to be around what I love to do. And I don't think that there is an end all be all because if I was, if I was saying, okay, my end all be all is Broadway, I do Broadway, what's next? Mm -hmm. You can't just have a one way track like that. Exactly. So I definitely feel like Tiger Drama has helped me with that. I'm just ready for what's next and I'm ready to, to not know. Catherine and I could have probably talked for 40,000 hours. She is wise beyond her years. She is going to just be amazing in New Jersey and beyond. Um, I just think it takes a lot of like courage and bravery to go across the country and chase your dreams. She's going to a college where there's not a lot of time for fun. Like yeah. she is so serious about her her journey and and making it in this entertainment and um, theater world. And I just had a really great time with her. And LC drama probably has some superstar freshmen that are coming up and rising freshmen from eighth grade that'll become a part of the program as well. Right. And so I'm sure they're going to miss Catherine so much, but great legacy and super excited for the future. And exactly. I love some seriousness. That's cool to be so dedicated. I know to be so dedicated. And, but she also had this perspective. She said in the interview, like you guys heard, I said, what, what's your dream? What's your goal? She said, I just want to be happy. I was like, oh my gosh, we need to put that and just blast it across the world. And I think people need to be reminded that as long as you're happy, life is good. Right. You know? And so she just That's going to take her far and yeah. not just far across the country, but like that's going to take her a long ways if she keeps, you know, super dedicated to both her drama experiences and then just to making a great life. And mm -hmm. that's so exciting. I know. So exciting. But then there's the flip side of that. And the future can be really scary. Sure. And so that's why we thought it would be so nice to talk to a college and career counselor 
And after this break, you will hear from Dawn from Ferris. She's the college and career counselor up there. And she just had really great perspective on the future does not have to be as scary as you think. Welcome back to SPS Extra. Since we're highlighting these seniors and talking about the future, all fun stuff, but can be a little bit scary, we thought it would be such a great idea to bring in a career and college readiness counselor. And we have Ferris's Don Hilsendegger with us. Thank you so much for joining me and talking about the scary big future, which is also so exciting. So first, how about you just describe what you do at Ferris. So my role at Ferris is to help all the students at Ferris, actually grades 9 through 12, as they're sort of building their high school and beyond plan. But you know, the freshmen and sophomores are not really ready to kind of think about that yet. And the juniors are just sporadically thinking about it. So I spend 90% of my time with seniors all year long, just helping them formalize their plan for after graduation and then doing as many steps towards that plan as possible. I hope that most of them, when they walk across the stage at graduation, feel really confident and secure that they actually are going to access that plan that they have come up with for after high school. When it comes to, especially seniors, the future is daunting. You know, you're like, wow, I'm gonna graduate. What's your biggest advice to them? How do you really try to get them to feel confident in their future plans? Yeah, it's just scary. You know, like I always tell them every year up till now, your plan was just you'd go to the next grade, you know? <laughs> and so it is kind of scary for a lot of them. It's exciting and scary. And I, I try and tell them to think of it as their next step. Right. It's really hard to think about what am I gonna do for the rest of my life, which some of them feel that is the decision they need to make. <laughs> and I tell them all the time, you're just making the decision for the fall, really. What's your next step and it may change in fact it probably will and I encourage them often to talk to their parents and to their teachers and ask them like what would you, what have you done until you got to this position many of them have had many career changes so it's just your next step and so if they think of it as just their next step it seems a less scary Absolutely. Um, and so I try to get them to do that and then I try to get them to be a little realistic too because a lot of them will have pie in the sky ideas which we encourage them to dream big but then also to have some kind of grounded plan B and plan C and plan and um, and that helps them I think feel less um, you know sort of scared that what if my plan doesn't work if they have a fallback plan and maybe a couple fallback plans so right. we talk about that kind of those kinds of things to try and ease their stress and then I tell them all the time all the time I tell them relax because it's <laughs> going to come together it always does I mean they're Generally in the fall of their senior year, and especially in the winter, there's a high degree of stress that it's not gonna happen, or things are all going to fall apart, but it all comes together by June, and um, I just tell them that, and just keep relax. it's gonna come together, just relax. <laughs> and usually they do feel relaxed by yeah. the end of the year, it's just there's many stressful points through the year, you know? Yeah, I loved your point about open-mindedness, and we talked about this a little bit before I hit record, and I feel like, we do have this stigma in this country. You have got to know what you have, what you're going to do with the rest of your life. How are you at 18 years old supposed to know what you're going to do yeah. the rest of your life? And if you do and you end up pursuing that and that's what you do until you retire, more power to you. Right. But I feel like life just, life throws things at you. Your priorities change. That's what happened with me. You know, my priorities changed. I was doing TV sports. I wanted something more work-life balance, and that's what I got here at SPS. And so I love that you tell the kids, hey, mm -hmm. it's your next step. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be forever. And also our world is changing so quickly. There are jobs that they will have access to when they are, you know, probably 22-ish that aren't even created yet. And so it's really hard to think about what you're gonna do for the rest of your life when there will be opportunities that you don't even know about. Yeah. They're not even jobs yet. Um, yeah, so be open-minded to hear about opportunities and, um, and what might be a good fit for you today might not be a great fit for you in a couple of years. You know, like you mentioned the family life balance, that's something that they aren't even thinking about yet, but right. that will become a big priority for them later. Teaching them to be open-minded and to just kind of think short-term versus long-term is right. helpful. And I'm sure you get so many students that are on both ends. You have students that have absolutely no idea what they want to do, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That is so totally okay. Then you have kids in the middle who are like, I have an idea. And then you have kids who are like, I know what I'm going to do. And this is my track to get there. With those kids that might not 
know exactly what they want to do. How do you help those kiddos? Well, a lot of the kids that say they don't know what they want to do, a lot of times they're really just intimidated. Sometimes they might have limited financial resources, and so they just say they don't know because they feel like everything is going to be too expensive, they can't afford it. Right. And so when then if it's just about educating them on financial aid and access to um, financial support, then they will start kind of developing some things that they're interested in. So sometimes that I don't know what I want can be just a fear thing. Um, and so it's teaching them, educating them on resources out there and then just exposing them. So we're really trying to get our students at the high school level, grades nine through 12, to be exposed to some kind of career options, whether it's a job shadow or an internship or um, even just having people come in and talk about what they're doing, um, what their careers are and how they access to that career. Then it starts to sort of spark interest in things that kids might be thinking like, oh, I kind of like that and I didn't even know you could make a career out of that, you know, that right. kind of thing. So those are just a couple of the things that we try to do to help them start developing ideas of what they might be interested in. And I feel like Spokane Public Schools does do a really good job across the district between new tech prep, CT courses galore. There's so many options. What can you say about that and how the district really has tried to up the ante when it comes to resources and giving these kids opportunities? New Tech is amazing. I mean, their, their programs that they do there are so career connected and they have great resources there that um, help students not only you know complete the program but then connect into an apprenticeship program or things like that. Right. So those kids are usually very, very job ready and connected to those kinds of things when they graduate. And so New Tech is amazing. Um, they do have limited seats and that sometimes can be, yeah. uh, you know, but we also have these CTE programs in the high schools and those often have articulation agreements with community colleges and things like that, which means that basically they can carry over some of their learning and credits even in, um, into some of those programs. And so between those two things and then other things like um, KSPS, I believe is the yeah. public um, TV station here, has this, um, site where basically they talk to a bunch of local people right. and they have those career videos and how they accessed them and we tried and put those videos into our career exploration advisory lessons as many times as possible and so I think that the not only the school district but also the community has been really trying to yeah. find ways to connect students to careers especially those careers that are more in the trade and technical programs mm -hmm. because those things are just growing like crazy. So crazy. And so you, we just need to keep informing and educating students on how you can access healthcare trades, for example, without going to a traditional college pathway. Right. They just don't know that that's possible until they hear about those opportunities. So yeah, it's, it's amazing the opportunities that are out there through the district with CTE and New Tech, but also even just out in the community, so. At one point, it was this, this mindset of like, you have to go to college, you have to have a degree. Mm -hmm. If you want to get paid more money, you have to get your master's, you know, all these crazy things. But now I feel like, and I don't know if it's just post-COVID or how you feel about this, but you don't necessarily have to go to college. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to go to college, great. If you don't, great. Mm -hmm. All options are great options. What can you say about that and how that has changed? Like you said, the trades world it is growing and expanding and there's so many options now mm -hmm. that if college isn't for you, mm -hmm. that's totally okay. You will still get to where you want to go. That's right. Yeah, you know, you're nailing it on the head. There's still a bit of stigma involved with that. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, parent generation where college was really kind of the best way to set yourself up for success. Right. And so the, the parents who want to support their kids being successful might also feel that that's what they should encourage their students to do. And and, and there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong with going to college. Um, in and of itself, except if the students don't want to be there. Right. And so then they will feel like this is not where I really want to be. I don't know why I'm here. And with the cost of college, that just can be really kind of problematic. Yes, so um, tricky. Yeah. It also back in the day, you know, when college was the best option for most people, college was much cheaper too. So we really have to be thoughtful about college right now. And so we try and encourage kids, like I say to the students at Ferris anyway, if you can't say why you're enrolling at that school, you shouldn't be enrolling in that school. And so hopefully, and, and sometimes the reason is because I just want to explore. And that's fine. If they yeah. if they can afford that exploratory option in a college, then that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but if they can't say why, often they will not stay and be successful. And then that money is 
you know, maybe not well spent. Right. So um, there's great opportunity to find a successful financially supporting career without going the traditional college route. And especially for the students who are not interested in that mm -hmm. college route, we just really want to make sure that they know that all pathways are valued and all of them can provide great satisfaction and upward mobility and financial support and stability. Coming from someone who um, pays a great amount for her student loans every <laughs> single month, Listen to Dawn, everybody. That's right. Nothing wrong with Plan B. I had an amazing experience at the University of Iowa, but there, it was just crazy for me. I went from having an awesome like transfer scholarship, and my senior year, I went. I graduated a semester early, so I was only going one semester, and apparently, we didn't do our FAFSA in time for me to get that transfer scholarship for my last semester. So I paid more in that last semester than I did the two and a half years prior. Oh my goodness. And it was very heartbreaking for my mom and I, but still got a great education. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know, the financial, it can't be, it cannot be ignored. Right. Um, and often that is why the plan B becomes reality for our students is they will want to go to school out of state um, or they want to access a school that's just really expensive. And I think that money, when they see that the cost of attendance is fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 a yeah. year at a school, they think that that is maybe not real or it won't be what they would be required to pay. And then in the fall, or I mean the spring, when that does become more realistic, like, oh, I actually is, is the bill? <laughs> That's when they're like, okay, I might need to look at my plan B. So I'm telling students all the time, hey, look, if you want to be in California or Texas or whatever, go to school in Washington State where we have amazing financial aid programs in the state of Washington and you can save a lot of money by going here and then move to California and work. Exactly. Right? Don't go into debt to get your education in California. Use the great financial resources we have here in our amazing university system to get educated. And then if you want to move, you can and totally. you know, stay out of that loan sort of, you know, nightmare. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> totally get it. Well, Don, thank you so much. This was amazing. When I was trying to decide on who and what counselor as far as college and career counselor to talk to, I could have picked so many across the district. They're so wonderful. Dawn is the OG though. She has been around. She knows her stuff. She is so well respected. And I think what she's doing with those kids at Ferris is really special. And I hope that they feel lucky to have her because oh, sure. she just has so much perspective. And when you're a counselor in that, you know, certain field and you're talking about the future and college and career and all that good stuff, you have to evolve yourself. You have to be up with the times and you have to be aware of how the world has changed. And she really knows her stuff. She knows that and she ingrains it in these kiddos brains like, you know, have have multiple plans, have A, B, C. She at the end of the interview was talking like, it's not like she's trying to convince these kids that they have to go to school in Washington, but Washington does have a lot of really great financial aid options for in-state kiddos. And she said it herself, you know, go to school in the state so you don't have debt and then you can move away and do your career somewhere else. If you want to go outside of Washington for college, great. I just think her perspective on all of that and her perspective on like, if you don't have a legitimate reason why you're enrolling in that school or or what major or what you might be interested in, like you can take your time to decide what you want to do, what path you want to take, because it is so it's so expensive these days. But I think it's hard to know. Like I changed majors, I think five times. Like I was pre-law, and then I was journalism, and yeah. then I was education with English, and then education with PE, uh -huh. which is where I ended up. And then there was something else in between that I'm not even remembering. Um, but I don't think you know, like talking about what we mentioned earlier, where you're about to be an adult, you're you're definitely there, mm -hmm. but you haven't developed and you haven't lived, so you don't really know how to make the decision. Right. Unless it's already been made for you because there's a path that just makes sense. Right. Um, I mean, I would imagine Catherine's going into something drama-related like we talked yes, about absolutely. earlier. Um, but in thinking about um, some of the things Dawn was mentioning it is okay to have a couple different plans. Absolutely. And I think like 
in the late 90s, not to date but and myself, but definitely have before in this podcast, <laughs> it was kind of just everyone went to liberal arts college. That's just the way that it was going. Right. And then that program came along that, of course, offered some military options. So military has kind of always been an option, too. Yeah. But then fast forward a few years after that, I worked at a credit union that served people in the trades, in the construction trades. Mm -hmm. And so I learned all about people who are carpenters and bricklayers and electricians who are making an awesome career. And thank goodness we have them because what are we doing in the world if we don't have everybody contributing their own special skill and makes sense? Why would you waste your money for four years to do something that you're not going to explore as a career. And so love the idea that there's just so many different paths and so many things that you can do. I know my husband and I talk about like, he's a software guy and graduated from Gonzaga and he loves Gonzaga and he looks back super fondly at his experience there. Fast forward 25 years later, his career, you could get a two year degree at um, local places or even places in Washington and end up at the same place he is now. Yeah. And so things change, things evolve. And I think it's just a matter of exploring the options and Catherine said, being happy, like Donna said, exploring different pieces and it's okay to change your mind. Yeah. Like it's okay that I took five years in college, kind of loved college. So I was like, I'm all about it with all my mind changing and everything. But I worked at the newspaper and I thought to myself, no, ma'am. I do not want to work from 4 p.m. to, to midnight, <laughs> yep. which is what sports was at the yep. newspaper. That's, and, yep. you know, move on to English. Loved English. Right. Lo- wanted to be a teacher. Yikes. Am I grading all those papers <laughs> when I'm coaching track and coaching volleyball? And yep. so you figure things out uh-huh. as you go. And so I think that's just all a part of it. So that's what the phase is about college and career readiness is like what are you ready for are you ready to explore all the different options so i'm so glad we have people like don and that's been a position we've had in spokane schools for a long time right and so it's evolved with the times and with what kids need and what they want and super lucky to have them there and all the cool options i love hearing about jobs college and right and all the things if i could go back I probably do five more majors. I know. Yeah. I mine was the flip side. I was so tunnel vision in college. I just wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Pridefully, I went and did the dang thing. Like I went to Iowa. I I knew what I wanted to do. I worked my way up in the TV, the student TV station. I was the sports director. You know, I went on to three amazing cities and I did it and it was so fun. Kids will ask me what what I think or advice or I'll talk to a class or I'll talk to a kiddo and try to help them. And I say, have an open mind. And that has been really important to me, especially post-college was to have an open mind because I was so tunnel vision in college. I just had this path of TV and that was that. And I wish I would have maybe gotten a, I double majored and I double majored in sports studies, but not going to lie to you all. That was an absolute joke, but I have two degrees. So that's cool. (laughs) <laughs> but still, I wish I would have done like public relations or whatever it might have been, um, media relations, community relations. I wish I would have gotten endorsement or something in that way. So I did have more of a, I don't know, options, but I am out of TV now and I'm in this and it is very much what I learned in school being a video storyteller, but still... I wish that I would have maybe had a bit less tunnel vision when I was in school. (laughs) The cool thing is that now there's options to do a lot of like supplemental work. Um, I I mean, you you just described some things you wish you would have gotten a degree in, but Mm -hmm. you could definitely explore those things, especially locally. If you had time, if you weren't recording this podcast all the time, in addition to your full-time job. Right. But like there's, it's cool that kids these days also have opportunities to expand and explore. And I know I was at, Uh, a nail appointment the other day sitting next to a girl who just graduated from Notre Dame. Wow. And I was like, wow, Notre Dame. And somebody said, oh, what did, what was your major? And she said, accounting. And I was like, whoa, thank goodness. And they said, oh, are you, you know, going to go get your um, graduate degree? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to go to UW and get my master's in accounting. She's like, I know it sounds super boring. And I thought to myself, that's awesome. You went to Notre Dame and now you're going to go to UW. Right. How fantastic. She must be a great student. Exactly. Awesome with numbers. And thank goodness we're going to have this former Elsie Tiger, I think she is, Yeah. Um, out in the world. That's so cool. Um, you know, being a great accountant. So just kind of cool to hear people's journeys. And yeah. It, 
there's just a lot to explore and I think it's totally fine to be all over the place and it's also fine to be super focused yeah. and know what you want and everyone's path is different and yeah. it just seems like what we're talking about in this podcast today is that everyone does have a different journey and exactly. we just need to prepare them so that they're um, mm-hmm. most equipped and, and best foot forward to go out there and just be awesome and rock it. Exactly. And speaking of just different paths and the way life will just take you, we hear next from a senior now graduated. I keep thinking that I'm like, they're all graduated now. They're going off and living their adult life. But we talked to a Rogers senior who was a dancer for four years. And if you know anything about that dance program, we love it. Yes. They're legendary. They are so committed. And what Brooklyn brings to the table is that she loved her experience at Rogers. Of course she did. She Mm. had Coach Amanda. Right. Coach Amanda and I judged some cheer together a few weeks ago. And it was so, I I felt so on it, like honored to be alongside her. And she's really created a fantastic program at Rogers. I mean, Rogers dance and drill are top notch. Exactly. It takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of time. And once you hear this interview, you'll know why that program and that school will always be one of the best things that ever happened to Brooklyn. Welcome back to SPS Extra. I'm at Rogers High School with senior Brooklyn Hallbrook. She's been a dancer here at Rogers for the last four years, also danced at Shaw for two years. And so welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first, dance. Why dance? What was it about dance that had you committed all the way for, I mean, who knows how long? (laughs) Well, actually, at a younger age, I started with gymnastics, and I seemed to only really like the floor routines. Everything else was not really for me, but props to those girls who do it. So I started doing dance when I started middle school through my school, and then got recruited by my sister's friends who were on the dance team here at Rogers, and they told her to tell me to try out. So then that's when I decided to continue and think that this helps me express who I feel like I couldn't express anywhere else. It's crazy because when you think of Rogers, a lot of people think of the dance program because you guys are iconic and you guys have had such a storied history. What has it been like for you these last four years to be a part of a program like that? Oh my goodness. Well, we've definitely had our ups and downs. I started right before COVID hit. And so everything was really normal at first. And then it went straight into online and we were doing through like videos and like Mm -hmm. FaceTiming. And then eventually we got to meet up outside and have practices outside and very cold or very hot. There was like no in between. <laughs> no in between ever in Spokane. <laughs> and it was in the grass and trying to dance in the grass was a little rough. Yeah. But we have a great family community here on the dance team and even though things can get a little rocky sometimes, we still come back together stronger than ever and continue to build and grow. Yeah. How thankful are you to have found a space like that at Rogers. I'm very thankful. My coach is definitely one of the main people I would go to a lot right. during practice. If I had something going on, we definitely would talk about it. And she would always be up to date with all of our lives. She was yeah. always 100% engaged with all of us and we love it and she's so sweet. And it's just so great to know that we have someone that we're always able to go to. Absolutely. And I think all athletes and students should have that one person at least within school and out of school that they should be able to go to. You talked about how it was in the middle of COVID and COVID happened and it you had to adjust but things have been pretty normal-ish I would say in the last year especially for your senior year. So how was your senior year? How what were some of your favorite memories when it came to dance? Oh my goodness state. Yes. Say we went to Yakima Sundome. Oh my goodness, it is a blast every year. It goes on for two days for the, the two different like groups. Yeah. It's just a blast. Everyone comes together, all the dancers. It's not even like a competition at that point because it's the end. Everyone is there yeah. to just put it all out on the floor and leave it there and have fun. And we all get a dance and dance some more. And we yes. listen to, we jam out to music at the end of it. And we do awards and games and it's just so much fun. And I love it. And the team bond bonding that and the experiences is just lovely. You make such a great point. It's it's really not about competition at that point. And 
I feel like in sports, people can get so heavy on the competition. Who doesn't love winning championships, obviously? But it's the relationships that you make and the bonds that you create and the memories that really is what makes sports special. Can you say that's what Roger's Dance has done for you? Yes, it really has, because just seeing everyone come together doing what they love to do and just everyone enjoying everyone's presence is just a great feeling. And so much energy around you just flowing everywhere. So great. <laughs> what do you think dance, the sport as a whole, but also being a part of the program here at Rogers, what do you think it taught you the most about yourself? It taught me how to carry myself, I should say. Carry myself without seeming cocky or arrogant, yeah. I should say. It allowed me to just feel like myself and put myself out there without being like too much, I guess. Like it just allowed me to be me. And yeah. it was my thing. Like everyone has their thing. Like there's the other athletes, you know, have their thing. And I just dance was my thing. And I just you gotta find your thing. That's all I can say. Yeah, it's funny because I was thinking during this, I was going to ask you what your biggest advice would be to an incoming freshman. What would you tell them? What's the biggest advice you'd give them as they're about to enter high school? Definitely find your rhythm and take your time, though. It, you don't need to figure everything out right now. Like, <laughs> it is, that is everything I just kept hearing is like half the teachers are like, what are you doing? And then they're half like, take your time. And so I would just definitely say, you have lots of time. You're definitely going to stay having lots of time. So take your time. You're going to need it. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy your high school experience because it goes by in a flash. If there was one thing, dance aside, just coming from Rogers and being from Rogers, graduating from Rogers, what's one thing you're going to take from this experience? The staff. A lot of the staff here is very supportive and I love a bunch of them. I'm definitely gonna point out Miss O'Connor and Miss Stacy. They're wonderful human beings here. They're like balls of sunshine. Yeah. And Mr. Montesinos, the Spanish teacher, he is another ball of sunshine <laughs> right there up at 8 a.m. Yeah. 8 a.m. with his coffee. And it is just lovely. The staff here definitely is super supportive and it's nice to have a staff that helps contribute to their students. Well, Brooklyn, thank you so much. It was so fun talking to you and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. She made such a great point about, yes, it is state and you want to win championships and all that jazz. But when it comes down to it, it is about the people that are around you. When she was describing that they just turned music on and they were all dancing and just having a good time. I could just picture it because I remember those moments growing up. And I remember like, yes, I was super competitive and I still am. And Brooklyn is as well, but it's so much more than just a competition. And I think that's why, of course, as we always say, sports, it's just so special. It's so special to share that bond. And that connection and that like sense of belonging is something that we've been talking about and focused on in all of the things extracurricular in Spokane schools in the last few years. I mean, forever, but really it's a focus. Yeah. And what she described with that community around her makes sense because Rogers loves their kids. Yeah. I mean, all of our schools do, but there's, there's something unique about a program like Rogers Dance and Drill that have endured and have become yeah. just part of the legacy that is the Rogers Pirates and that's so awesome to hear from Brooklyn and yeah. she's going to go out there and do great things. Yeah, she is. In case you all were wondering, we're going to talk about summer vibes because nothing is better than summer. We offer a lot yeah. when it comes to camps and programs and you know, we've talked about summer programming in some of our episodes and we're going to check in on those because I think it's important to not only talk about it and get it out there that these things are happening, but to check in and see how people are doing and see how people's summers are. Because seriously, like that's all I did growing up. My summer was full of basketball camps, volleyball camps, league every night. Oh my gosh, summer league. <laughs> summer and league. I'm five foot five and I had to be a center, like a post. Oh no. <laughs> In summer league. I just remember that. And it was so, I was, well, I, I did it because it was fine. Because you have to. But it was like summer, <laughs> so there wasn't everybody there. And yeah, like, of course. I remember it completely and playing at like stuffy gyms. Like 
middle of summer when it's 90 degrees outside. Yep. And it's, but it's awesome to lace them up and get out there and hit a few jumpers. and <laughs> Right. When I wasn't on varsity, I would go and watch the varsity in yeah. summer league. And I'd bring my shoes in the car just, just in case. case. <laughs> and frequently... I got in and they would say, oh, we need an extra player. And it was just like that yes. like casual vibe of summer that it was like, okay, you can play. And then, you know, worked up to that point. But right? I always was bringing the shoes, hoping I could get in and play. Oh, that's and so fun. Yeah, summer is a lot of fun. And we've got some opportunities in addition to athletics camps that are really fun and becoming Spokane School's tradition. So yeah. that'll be fun to talk about in July. Yes, we can't wait. And we know that all you seniors out there have graduated, but we do really wish you all the best of luck. And if we haven't said it enough in this episode, life's always changing. Life is life is crazy. So if you ever feel lost, just come back to this episode and hopefully we can give you some inspiration. <laughs> Congratulations. Way to go out there and be awesome and do big things. Exactly. You guys can follow us at Spokane Schools on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can get all the latest updates, watch stories, read blogs, all of the good stuff. As usual, thank you so much for listening and we will see you guys in July. Bye.